Hi everyone and welcome along to another one of my baking videos, you can kind of tell because I'm in the kitchen. Um, today we're going to make cheese scones. Um, it's a recipe that I got passed down from my nan because I used to always get really excited whenever I'd go and visit her. Um, I'd get really excited about eating fresh cheese scones. And I am going to say the best way to eat these is hot out the oven with a load of melted butter on top. So make sure you, you're free to eat them after you've made them because you won't be able to resist them for much longer anyway. Um, I'm going to do the same sort of setup as I did with the cupcake video. Um, I got a really good response from that and it was really nice. The only thing I did forget is to set my oven is degrees Celsius because I am English. So not Fahrenheit because nothing would ever cook. Unfortunately I don't know the conversions for Fahrenheit but Google is a wonderful thing so if you need to convert any measurements or temperatures I use in this video then um, I'm sure Google will help you out. Just a quick note, this um, recipe is in pounds and ounces. And like I say, it's from my nan, so she's from that time when we used pounds and ounces. Most scales do have both on. My scale has kilograms or pounds on, or ounces. Um, so you can use both, if not again, you have to convert it. But I'm going to get straight into the tutorial for you. I hope you really enjoy this. Again, the same as always, leave me your comments. Tweet me your photos um, and just video responses, anything. And also thumbs up this video if you'd like to see more of my baking videos. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just run through all of the equipment we need and then I'll tell you all of your measurements as well. You are going to want a pastry brush. This is to brush the milk on top of the scones when they're ready to go in the oven. You can use a paintbrush if you want to make sure it's not like your dad's best paintbrush or something. Just no paintbrush would do as well. As long as it's clean. Um, a knife, mine has been used for butter, but a knife as well. Um, a teaspoon for measuring. So I've got a couple of things that are just teaspoonfuls. A rolling pin. A sieve for sifting your flour. A pastry cutter with one of these little wavy edges. Now this is the size mine, it's about the size of the part of my hand. You can get all different sizes. This is the second one up in my set. Um, and that's just a nice sort of size for the scones. Um, baking tray. I am going to grease this. I was going to do it before the video, but I thought I'm not sure if people know how to grease trays, so I'll show you that as well. Um, I actually have. I need my flour out. You are going to want your flour um, to put on the rolling pin to keep it, um, you know, like not sticky, as it will stick to your dough once it's done. Mixing bowl. Of course, this is the nice Pyrex one. And then your ingredients you're going to need um, are 8 ounces of self-raising flour. Now I'm going to make about 5 or 6 scones. If you do want to double and make 12, you want 16 ounces of self-raising flour, but this is 8 ounces. Then the easy way to remember your other two key ingredients is however many ounces you've got, you halve for your cheese and your butter. So 8 ounces of self-raising flour, if anyone's good at maths and you're really quick and you've got that already, I've got 4 ounces of butter and 4 ounces of grated cheese. Now the best cheese to use for scones is an extra mature ch cheddar, a really really strong, it doesn't have to be cheddar, just an extra mature cheese, a really strong cheese because you want that punchy flavour in them. Um, use most of this in the mixture, a tiny little bit at the end on top of the scones as well. And then what we've got here is one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of mustard powder, it's quite easy to get hold of. Uh, if you can't get mustard powder you can use just normal mustard but it is best to get your mustard powder. This is, a, I've actually measured out a pinch of salt, that's quite a big pinch though. And then you're going to want a little bit of milk any milk at all and that is what you're going to brush into the scones right at the end. So I'm going to put some over here because we're not going to need it for a little while. Okay, so if we grease our tray first, take a little bit of butter, take a pinch of flour, spread it across the whole pan, tray, same thing. And then you're going to want to just, I'm just patting the back of the tray, like you're burping a child. We actually wouldn't do it that hard with a little child. And there you are, and 
is the whole tray covered in flour and that'll stop your scones sticking when they're in the oven. So put that to one side, get your mixing bowl. Well, the first thing you want to do is combine all your dry ingredients. So that is your eight ounces of self-raising flour, your baking powder, mustard powder, and a pinch of salt. Um, if you haven't got butter off of your knife, on a knife like this, then you can use this end and mix it in. I'm going to use the other end because I've got butter on mine. So just combine all your dry ingredients. There we are. And then you want to add the four ounces. Come out. Oh my god. Who saw that coming? Not me. Four ounces of margarine. And then squeeze it all together with your fingers. There we are. Now that is done when it's all combined together like that. And your hands are gross like this. And then you add most of your cheese. I'm going to leave about that much to top them. You can always put them if you need it. And then just mix that in as well. Right, I've just cleared a little bit more room to get the dough out. Guess what I forgot to do? I forgot to sieve my flour. I'm sure I forget that every time I make something. So that's not that. Um, the first thing you want to do is clean and dry your work surface. Then take a little flour, spread that all over here, and then take a few bits more. And then take your dough out of the mixing bowl. Okay, then you want to start rolling your dough out. Now you do not want to go too thin with this. Because scones like to be quite thick. So I'm going to say about there. So I've almost filled the pastry ring. About that height. So don't sort of expand if that's that much in the oven. I'm not going to get one out of that, am I? That wasn't rolled very well. Make sure you keep moving your flour around, otherwise the dough will just stick to the work surface. Sided on that one. There's another two. Try to use up as much dough as you can. Nice big one, that one. Right, 
There we are. Unfortunately, it's a little left over bit, and I can't do much with that. Okay, now you want to bring across your milk. Just bring you in a bit closer for this bit. Take your pastry brush, dip it in a little milk and then brush it across the top of each scone. There we are. And then you take your grated cheese and put a nice little amount of cheese on top of each scone. And what this will do is that will just crisp up really nice. Give them a little extra bit of oomph. degrees Celsius and I'm just going to pop these in and then I'm going to put the timer on for 15 minutes they might take a little bit longer but it's best to do in 15 and check them and then add on extra time if you need to so we'll come back to these in 15 minutes slightly longer than I expected they would take but that's them there Bun. I like them really hot, fresh out of the oven. You might have a different personal preference, but this is how I like them. Let's take a bread knife, and they're going to be really like soft and gooey. So there we are. And then I'm going to take far too much butter and pop that straight on the top, and let all that melt in. And that is how I am going to eat my cheese scones. So that's it, that's the end of this baking tutorial. Probably should have made some more, I'm going to probably end up finishing all of these. But these are our cheese scones. I hope yours turned out just as good and I hope that you really enjoy this recipe and this tutorial video as well. I'd love it if you could tweet me your pictures or even do a video response of you making them, that would be great. Um, all of my Twitter and that sort of stuff is below, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. Leave me any comments if you have anything that, that needs changing in the like, format of the videos, because I'm enjoying making these baking videos, and I'd love to do lots more. So yeah, I hope you really enjoyed this one. Enjoy your cheese scones, and I'll see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye everyone.